Welcome to the June 9, June 9 2014 uh, Town Council meeting of the Town of Cape Elizabeth. <clears throat> Could we please have the roll call? Chairman Sullivan? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor McCausland? Here. Councilor Ray? Here. Councilor Sherman? Here. Councilor Wagner? Here. And Councilor Walsh? Here. Would you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Um, are there any reports and correspondence from the council? Council Walsh? Um, I'd just like to report on the, um, on the good work that is taking place with our Senior Citizen Advisory Commission, which is a new group that has uh, been in, uh, working every two weeks um, with, the, uh, with the assistance of Matt Sturgis on the administrative side. Uh, their chairman is Brett Seekins, and um, just to give you some of the work that they've been doing of late, they had Dr. Sheila Panette from the CDC. They also had Jack Hennessy from the AARP come speak to them, uh, and they are working with church organizations and other large groups here in town. They're in sort of the early stages of gathering information so as to assemble a report for us based on the charge. Um, they are planning in the next uh, several months at least one public forum in which they intend to get as much input from the community as, at large as possible. So um, all good work, uh, meeting every two weeks. Uh, these meetings are three and four hours long, so uh, I will tell you my hat's off to them. They are energetic. Uh, this is a group that's addressing the issues of 60-year-olds or better. And I will tell you if there's any indication the energy level that has been uh, assembled in the room when this group gets together is pretty amazing. So um, all, good, all good stuff and um, um, my hat's off to, the, to uh, Brett and his team, but also to Matt Sturgis for carefully directing them uh, through the process. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other reports or correspondence? No? I have several items. Uh, first of all, congratulations to the Cape Elizabeth High School class of 2014. They graduated yesterday, and we wish them all the best for very bright futures. We'd like to thank Jim Hubner for organizing another wonderful Memorial Day parade and ceremony, and we want to thank all who participated. <clears throat> the weather was a little iffy, but at the start of the parade at 9 o'clock, it cleared. Special mention to that adorable brownie troop, I don't have their number, but they were carrying a very large banner. <laughs> which was announcing that the Grand Marshals were all the Vietnam veterans. And um, they did a wonderful job. And they, they carried it through the parade and held it through the ceremonies. Also, um, I'd like to mention the Cape Elizabeth Lions Club for carrying and holding through the entire ceremony the largest American flag I have ever seen. <laughs> That's a lot of work, and they did a wonderful job. Uh, another item, Michael Duddy, Cape Elizabeth's tree warden, and uh, also the 2014 Ralph Gould Award winner, um, let us know that several disease-resistant American chestnut trees had been given to the town by the main chapter of the American Chestnut Foundation. And these were planted on May 23rd uh, in Fort Williams down on the, there's a sort of a peninsula in front of the parking lot where many of the buses go. Three of these were planted and uh, so there were members of the main chapter present, including uh, longtime Cape resident Bob Bayross, who's been a member for many, many years. Um, so we want to thank the main chapter for these trees and to Mike Duddy for, for talking to the foundation about donating them. I would like to say that uh, just an interesting fact, I thought, well, why is there a chapter of the American Chestnut Foundation and perhaps there's the American Maple Foundation or whatever, but what's particularly special about the American Chestnut Tree is in American folklore and history is that um, the chestnuts are loaded with protein and early colonists ate them for survival. So these, these members that were present were very excited to 
to tell us all about that. So there is some, um, there's some material, if anyone's interested at any point, that they gave us. But there are three beautiful little trees who in six years will be a lot bigger than they are now. So thank you very much. Um, would li I'd like to also thank the Cape Elizabeth Recycling Committee. They had another paper shredding event on Saturday. This is extremely popular and it's great work that they're doing. So thank you for that. For that. Um, and the finance report, please. Thank you. Um, first of all, tomorrow we have, uh, we have a vote, and uh, that vote is uh, for the school board, uh, the budget that's been proposed and accepted by us and presented to the town. And uh, we hope to get a, a good turnout. Um, secondly, the refinance of the bonds that were approved at our last meeting, uh, that is underway. Um, Michael is uh, meeting with Standard and Poor's um, in the next several days. Um, as far as revenue, um, one could argue that things are on track. However, they're a little bit better than that. Uh, in terms of budget, we're ahead by 125000 and about 375000 in overlay. Um, so we're better than budget by $500,000 at the moment. Excise taxes are up 100,000, um, which is pretty impressive. So there have been a lot of new vehicles purchased and registered, which is all good news. And um, other than that, uh, again, uh, I look to uh, the vote and direction of the community tomorrow in terms of next steps. Thank you. Thank you. Um, mm. <clears throat> I'd like to ask uh, Deborah Lane, the town clerk, to tell us a little bit about election day tomorrow. Thank you very much. As Councilor Walsh has mentioned, we do have a vote tomorrow. There's actually two votes. One is on the school budget um, validation vote, and the second is uh, the primaries for the Democrat, Green, and um, Republican parties. So if you are a Cape Elizabeth resident, we welcome you to join us and register to vote. Welcome to join us at the high school gymnasium, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, is our hours. If you are enrolled in one of those three political parties, um, you would participate in the party primary and also uh, receive the school budget um, ballot as well. If you are registered to vote but you are unenrolled and wish to remain unenrolled, you may um, also get, you may get the um, school budget um, ballot. So even though you're unenrolled, you'll still be able to participate in the school vote. So that's important to uh, know. If you are perhaps new to town and need to register to vote, you may do so at the high school gymnasium. And please bring proof of identity and residency, which if you have your driver's license with your CAPE address, that would satisfy both. And again, you'd be able to uh, vote right at the elections tomorrow. So look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we now have an opportunity for people wishing to address the town council on issues that are not on tonight's agenda. Repeat, not on tonight's agenda. Yes. Please step up to the podium. You have three minutes, sir. And could we have your name and address? Please? Yes, definitely. And um, when does this start? <laughs> After I give you my name and address, Tom Coker. And I live at 6 Sarah Road. Is it a resident for uh, six years? Yes. Okay. Uh, Prior to that, in New York State. Um, if somebody could, is timing me, if I could just get a finger when I've got one more left, one minute left, it'd be great. Okay, I, uh, um, I'm a retired school teacher, science teacher, and uh, before that, I was also a registered or certified industrial hygienist, and I also directed a, an environmental laboratory in New York State where the state certified me to do Superfund work, or my laboratory to do Superfund work. And during that time, I also spent two years being environmental correspondent for the local affiliate of CBS News in Albany. Um, and as a town resident, I know that all of you take quite seriously your responsibility to protect the health and safety of the people in this town, a given. Okay? And tonight I want to alert you to the fact that there is a danger, a potential danger, to the health and safety of people in this town. And um, that is the proposed reversal of the Portland Pipeline, which is planned to bring um, diluted tar sands bitumen to South Portland. And it's a danger to us for two reasons. One, water quality. The pipeline crosses 
Lake Sebago, it's Crooked River, the, the largest influx of fresh water into Lake Sebago, which is a national, if not a state, treasure. Um, eight, nine times, I'm told. And any spill occurring in this 60 plus year old pipeline would forever contaminate um, Lake Sebago. And um, I think that risk is real, okay, and one which we must consider. So we are drinking that Sebago water. It is a treasure. Once it's contaminated, there's no going back. Second, um, once that bitumen is brought into South Portland, it has been diluted up in Canada with uh, something like gasoline. And to put it onto a ship requires that that gasoline be stripped off and it pumped onto the ship. And then they're going to burn it in two 70-foot stacks. Okay, and that is going to affect the air quality. We don't know how much, but it will affect the air quality. So, I believe, as, as, my, as your, my representatives, uh, I think we have an obligation here to study this issue and to make it to come to a decision on our own. But it cannot be said that this is South Portland's problem. This is our problem. We drink that water, we're going to be breathing that air. And I think um, that um, we need to take a position on this. I would hope it would be a position of support of what's happening in South Portland. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. one last thing. I'm here tonight to represent present and future generations, my grandchildren included. And um, I want my grandchildren to know that I try to do the best for them and protect them. I think, and I think that they deserve nothing less from all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. My name is Mary Jane Ferrier, and I live in South Portland and come here representing a citizen action group known as Protect South Portland. I hope that you will allow me to speak this evening to bring you news of considerable importance to the town of Cape Elizabeth. All right. Yes, you have three minutes. Thank you. The City Council of South Portland appointed a draft ordinance committee last January to craft a city ordinance that will legally prevent the bringing of tar sands to the port for loading on tankers for export to refineries elsewhere. That committee is on the verge of presenting their proposed ordinance to the city council for their consideration and passage. And this will take place probably at the end of this month. This ordinance's impact goes well beyond the borders of the city of South Portland. While protecting the traditional waterfront businesses and recreational activities of that city's port, it will also protect the valuable resources we of the Casco Bay communities all depend on, that is, clean air and clean water. Tar sands oil is the dirtiest oil on the planet. Loading it on tankers requires vapor combustion unit, units that spew toxic chemicals into the atmosphere, all of which not only threaten us and our children's health, but that of the whole ecosystem surrounding us in these beautiful Bay communities. This proposed ordinance will keep this from happening to us all. Protect South Portland has many volunteers from the town of Cape Elizabeth who have worked hard over many months to help bring about this important action. And they recognize the wider import of it. I am here this evening to ask this town council to publicly express its appreciation and support for the initiative taken by the City Council of South Portland, an action that will benefit your town enormously. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to items not on tonight's agenda? Seeing no one, I'm sorry. Uh, thanks. The town center is on the agenda, so you would need to wait until that item. Thanks. So I will close the uh, the. Uh, 
opportunity for discussions of items not on the agenda. We'll now move on to the town manager's monthly report. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman Sullivan. Wanted to just give a brief update on, on two matters. Uh, first is the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board is going to be meeting on June 17th uh, next week. And they have two items on their agenda. The, the, the reason I'm primarily mentioning this is that the, the most significant one is the Thomas Memorial Library Expansion Renovation Site Plan. Uh, so anyone who's particularly interested in that project, I'd encourage them to check, to look at the materials, uh, to uh, attend the, the board meeting. Uh, they will probably also be scheduling a public hearing on that. This, the second item, it, actually the library's second on the agenda first, is a request from the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, who's requesting an extension of their permit uh, that they were granted to install trails in the RP1 in the RP2 buffer and in the RP2 wetlands located on Robinson Woods 2. Uh, there seems to be a lot of interest lately in what's done with wetlands. And I just wanted to make sure everyone's aware that the land trust is requesting an extension of their permit to alter the wetlands at Robinson Woods. Uh, secondly, did want to mention that uh, there's been an exchange back and forth. There were some letters that went out to some Shore Road residents about uh, some paper streets. And uh, we were a little confused because we weren't sent any notice. And sure, sure, acres. sure Acres. What did I say? Shore Road. Shore, Shore Acres. Yeah, Shore Acres. Shore Road in my mind. Uh, Shore Acres. And you know, we were sort of taken aback when we saw that somehow the town had abandoned paper streets. So anyway, I just wanted to update. We've, we've had a lot of citizen comment on this. And we have been using the firm of Bergen and Parkinson uh, on this particular issue. And I just wanted to read aloud a letter that Derwood Parkinson, our attorney, at Bergen and Parkinson sent us uh, on this issue. Uh, and it's addressed to Bob Steer at PS Atwood. Bob Steer at PS Atwood is the attorney, I believe, for the Chatmuses and for the Khalidis. And what, what he wrote is, Dear Bob, uh, re-notice to Shore Acres owners dated May 29, 2014. Dear Bob, I have received your letter of May 16, 2014, referencing your letter of December 31, 2013, as the basis for your contention that the town of Cape Elizabeth has vacated an unaccepted way on the plan of Shore Acres, property of Shore Acres Land Company, recorded in the Cumberland County Register of Deeds in Plan Book 12, page 45. Please be advised that the town does not agree with your position that any portion of these streets have been, been vacated and considers as invalid the notice filed in Cumberland County Registry of Deeds in Book 31398, Book 109. The filing of this notice has created questions for the recipients of the notice who should seek independent legal counsel. Unless the town council action to the contrary, the town's preservation of its paper streets is recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, document number 054. 366 remains in full force and effect. Very truly yours, Derwood W. Parkinson. Again, that's a letter May 29th from uh, Mr. Parkinson, our attorney, to uh, the attorney for the Chapmases and uh, the Khalidis, uh, specifically stating that we do not agree with the position that a lot of people in Shore Acres received a letter from, saying that the paper streets were abandoned. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying the town's position. Thank you. Um, we are going to review the draft minutes at our June 16 workshop, I understand. Is there not available? Yes. The draft minutes of the May 12, uh, 2014 meeting are not available, so they'll be reviewed on June 16th. It's on the agenda, but they're not available. Just if I might on that, the town council has a workshop on June 16th mm -hmm. to go over uh, nothing on tonight's agenda, but to go over uh, the goals and a couple of other issues. And there's also going to be a council meeting prior to that, uh, that there's going to be a quit claim deed, which is a ministerial type action that you take after someone's paid their property taxes to release our claim. Uh, two, uh, carry forward balances. And three, uh, as we look at the entire budget, there's a possibility of the public works budget might be slightly over uh, due to the winter. And I'm, I'm re-looking at that number uh, and looking for a transfer from other places where uh, there still are plenty of money. Overall, the budget's well within balance. But I just wanted to make you aware that that would be next Monday, uh, a week from tonight at 7. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so we move on to item number 7. I'm sorry, item number 85. 
Good table annual licenses. The town council re will review the annual malt, finest, and spiritus licenses for the Good Table Restaurant. Would the town clerk please uh, introduce that item? Yes, I'd be happy to. The Good Table has submitted their annual uh, liquor licenses, as uh, Chairman Sullivan has stated. The application is complete. There have been no uh, concern ra concerns raised by police, um, fire, or code enforcement officer. And the owners of the Good Table are here this evening. Should you have any questions for them? Thank you. Is there a motion? To approve yes, the Good Table Annual Licenses. I move that we accept the Good Table Annual License request. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Ray? Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 86, the Local Buzz Annual Licenses and Special Amusement Permit. Council Wagner, thank you very much for stepping down as owner of the Local Buzz. <laughs> and again, um, would the town clerk please uh, introduce these these, both of these items. Yes. Uh, as you say, the local buzz has submitted its renewal license for the malt, spiritus, and vinous liquor license and for special amusement permit. Um, law requires that if an establishment holds a liquor license and has any type of live music, then they also have to um, apply for the special amusement permit. Uh, the buzz has done that. Their applications are complete. There have been no uh, concerns raised by police, fire, or code enforcement officer. The owner is present if you should have any questions. And could you, um, uh, something I was wondering about and the town clerk clarified for me, but um, the special amusement permit is, um, would you please just tell us about the state law as well as what is covered in our own ordinance? It is the, the uh, special amusement permit again is required if an establishment has liquor uh, and will have, holds a liquor license and will have any type of live music. I, this law has been on the books for many, many years. I suspect that years ago when um, it came about, it was um, to put on notice residents and abutters uh, to possibly live music happening in an establishment. So again, this has been on for many, many years. And um, there are a couple, two or three that we have in town that have special amusement permits, um, Perputic, In by the Sea, and the Buzz. So. I would follow in line with those permits. Okay. Is there a motion? Councilor Sherman? I uh, move that we approve the licenses and the permit for the local bus. Is there a second? Councilor Jordan, any uh, discussion? I can't pronounce spirituous, spirituous. and finest, so I just <laughs> made it generic. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Jordan, second. Is there, are there any, is there any discussion? Councilor Walsh? Should we have uh, Mr. Wagner speak to the group since he's uh, present? Uh, just to support. No, just to support the application. That's no. I'm only, I'm only kidding. Sorry. Is there anything you would like to say? Okay. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor? It's, it's approved. Thank you. All right. Item number 87: the Town Center Committee Report. The Towns Council will receive the report of the Town Center Planning Committee. Um, I know we have people in our audience who probably want to speak to this. We'll do that later. I think that we have uh, a PowerPoint presentation coming, but I'd like to ask the lead counselor on this committee, Council Wagner, to introduce the rest of the items. Uh, Stephanie Carver and I left the Red Sox softball game a little early to make sure we got here on time tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so the Town Center Planning Committee uh, met for about a year and had uh, 17 meetings in all, and we had a lot of public comment uh, that was received and reviewed. And uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time saying anything more because Stephanie has a full presentation to give. So I'll turn it over to our chair, Stephanie Carver. Uh, um, but before I do so, I, I do want to thank all the volunteer members of the uh, Town Center Planning Committee and all the citizens who came in and gave their comment. It's very much appreciated. Stephanie. Thank you, Jamie, and um, thank you, Town Council, for letting me speak about the Town Center Plan. I know it's not typically done in a presentation format, so we do appreciate the opportunity to kind of uh, explain some of what we've done. Um, my name's Steph Carver, as Jamie said, and um, I was um, somehow put in the chair position of the Town <laughs> Center Planning Committee. So um, on behalf of our committee, I'm just going to move through this presentation 
And um, let's begin. So uh, why start, why create a town center plan committee? Um, I think that started with, with you all. Um, the existing town center plan is from 1993 and typically these plans are updated um, at least you know, normally every decade or so. So it's been about 20 years since this plan's been updated and um, I think the town council actually felt like it was time to take another look. So um, our committee charge, as you all know, was to take a look at the existing conditions, um, meet with the library planning committee, uh, articulate a vision, and implement an Im informational plan, which I think is something that all committees actually do in this town, come up with a status report at some point, and then um, finally come up with some recommendations. These are the members of our committee. Um, I think uh, I could, I'm not going to go through every single name. Most of them probably look familiar to you. But we had representatives from town businesses. Um, we had members, several members of the public, somebody from the school board, a couple of town councilors, and planning board representatives. OK, so town center zoning district. Um, it's gotten a lot of attention in the past few uh, months, or maybe last year. Uh, it actually represents about 1% of Cape Elizabeth um, in terms of its acreage. It's 144 acres. And it's, you can kind of see it's a little blurry, but down on the bottom, that pie chart shows you, I believe, the yellow and the gold. I don't think the orange, but um, are actually residential areas, areas zoned residential in town. So, over 50% of town is actually residentially zoned. Um, the 1993 plan had a vision that's pretty similar to what, um, what you'll see in our uh, recommendations. Create an identifiable town center that includes a village feeling mixed retail uses targeted to residents, a pedestrian inviting environment, a common meeting place, visual vitality, and linkages to the town's open space and school assets. And in that 1993 plan, there were 37 recommendations. Um, 20 of those recommendations were implemented. And this is kind of a, a list of some of the highlights that were implemented and things that needed to be implemented. Among the, the items implemented was the town center zone um, design standards. And I believe they did a stormwater plan. Now, not implemented, sidewalks are listed because there's still a lot of sidewalks that were recommended that were never actually built. The creation of a town green and constructing stormwater infrastructure that was recommended in the plan. In 2007, that was um, the date of the last comprehensive plan and the vision included, I won't read all these, but as you can see that it's highlighted um, about halfway down, cultivating the town center as a mixed use commercial area. In that comprehensive plan, goal one, the town the town center shall be promoted as the primary commercial area of Cape Elizabeth and shall be developed consistent with the town center master plan to meet the needs of residents and visitors currently attracted to the town's natural resources and recreational opportunities. So town center plan committee process. Um, our process was actually quite extensive. Originally, we had anticipated about six months. Um, we actually took a year. So we held 17 meetings. Uh, we did a site walk. We had a joint meeting with the library planning committee and a public forum. Uh, we did a public information plan, plan and included public comment periods for every meeting. So we had them before, at the beginning of every meeting, at the end of, public, at the end of each meeting. There was an opportunity for the public to speak, and they did. Uh, we actually had quite a, quite a few people show up at our meetings as we continued down the, the road. Um, we, circulated a questionnaire. We had about 80 responses. At our forum, we had 50 plus attendees. Um, we, one of the things that we did, we looked at, tried to look at as much documentation from the town as we could. So we looked at the 1993 plan, obviously, and those um, re 37 recommendations that we talked about. We looked at the 2007 comprehensive plan. We looked at the current zoning. I don't think this is down here, but we also looked at some of the design guidelines. Um, we 
looked at a lot of planning articles that um, Maureen staff provided us, and those were actually quite helpful as well. And I can't read. Oh, and then we drafted, um, I can't read what that says, but I think it says <laughs> five goals and I believe seven recommendations. So, okay, yes, five goals. So our five goals, um, basically we tried to divide, since there were so many recommendations in the first plan, we kind of tried to streamline it a little bit. It says sharpening the focus. So we took the plan and we developed five overall goals. And within those goals, we, came, we sort of tried to fit in the recommendations that hadn't been implemented and any new ones that we developed into those five goals to kind of create a, a little bit more organized document, something that would be more user friendly and easier for the council to, to implement and understand. So goal one was pedestrian vehicular circulation. We looked at sidewalks and creating kind of a new main street area on 77 adjacent to town hall. Goal two was mostly focused on stormwater management. Goal three, um, mostly focused on the town green. And goal four, we looked at the visual appeal of town center, um, keeping the design standards and possibly adding a technical manual, which most cities and towns um, nowadays will have. And, and basically what that is, is if you've got you know, a certain type of lighting that you want um, a developer to use, the manual will document that. It makes it easier for people to know what the town's vision is for that. So goal five was looking at infrastructure financing and we looked at the, the tax increment financing, the TIF and um, other possible funding like grants, that type of thing. So <laughs> the evolving village green idea. Um, this idea obviously has been front and center for a lot of um, the discussion that's gone on after we submitted our draft uh, plan. And the idea, the concept came about actually in the 1993 plan. It's a recommendation. Um, we again carried that recommendation forward in, in our plan. Um, the town center property owners offer to discuss the town green on private town center lot, on the private town center lot, actually occurred at our October forum. Um, there was, I think it was a representative for the property owner came forward at the forum and asked if it might be possible to introduce the concept to the committee. So in February of 2014, we took a look at that and um, we met with the architect and really did a, a detailed look at what was being proposed and recommend and ended up in the end the committee recommended pursuing the village green option and possibly looking at a wetland amendment um, in the town center just in the town center area so <laughs> we might as well just keep going with this concept the village green concept plan basically as you can see i have a little pointer which now isn't going to work ah there it is Okay, so this plan, as you all probably know, um, is between the town hall and the land trust lot. It's currently, as proposed, 4.5 acres. 3,500 square feet of that is in an RP2 wetland. Um, an acre of it, which is around right around here, has been proposed to um, either in some manner um, an easement or through transfer of ownership become a town green and this area here which is right now um, the RP2 wetland would be incorporated into a pond um, on or or some kind of rain garden something along those lines in the plan um, the proposal includes a one one-story retail building and three two-story mixed-use office or residential combination. So as a committee, we tried to draft some sort of proposed language. And we understood when we were drafting this that this would probably not be the final you know, um, iteration of this. But it would go through many different channels and lots of public comment. But we felt like it was necessary for us to, to sit down and, and at least make some suggested language. Um, 
So our draft tax, an RP2, wetland, uh, RP2 district wetland located on a lot in the town center district may be completely altered when the overall development includes a substantial public benefit, such as the creation of a publicly accessible village green. The same overall development will also not be required to meet the maximum front yard setback for buildings located in the development. So essentially, there, and I'm going to go through this in a minute, but there are a lot of options currently under the RP2 zone for development. Um, there is options for alteration of the wetland, but we felt like this language gave some more clarification to that. Um, the site that we're talking about is currently privately owned, it's commercially zoned, and it's being marketed as a commercial lot. Um, we felt as a committee that there was an opportunity to take advantage of this situation and gain something for the residents of the town. Um, we also felt like the design gave a little bit more, it was a, a better quality design than what you'll see has been submitted in the past. Um, one of the highlights that we saw was that the green space was actually located on Route 77, which we felt was really important for a town green type of um, open space, that it be centrally located and it be adjacent to something with some architectural and cultural significance like the town hall. And so, you know, just to reiterate, the impact of the amendment is limited to the 1% area that is now town center, um, just that RP2 zone in the town center district. <clears throat> this gives you an idea of um, one of the previous development proposals, and it's a little um, hard to see, but I'll try my pointer again. <clears throat> this is parking. This is actually a 10-acre lot, so it's a larger lot than what's being proposed now. The R RP2 wetland is this little green blob. <laughs> There's a three and a half acre medical office building proposed. This is driveway. There's a tiny bit of um, space here, open space here. I think there's a little bit of green space here. The rest of this is all parking. Um, another iteration of the plan, again, a 10 acre lot. And this one has no RP2 wetland alteration. This is the wetland, the little green blob. <laughs> this is the driveway. It goes to the back of the lot where the parking is. There's some green space here, which in my opinion is completely useless. There is some limited green space here, and again, another medical office building, three and a half stories. This gives you an idea of what your current zoning allows in an RP2 wetland. I'm not going to go through this. I'll spare you all the painful details of that, but you can go through it on your own. But it basically shows you how many options. There's a lot here. This is not sacred land. This, there are options. There is some flexibility in your current zoning. So what's allowed now? Here's a plan, parking. The wetland, RP2 wetland, is unchanged. And here's the option. We just wanted to put those side by side so you could see the difference. The history of um, the Heffenreffer lot, um, essentially this is, I won't go through this one by one, but it tells you that this lot has been in some sort of commercial circulation basically since 1947. Um, it's been in some kind of commercial district, and um, it's changed hands a number of times. I think at one point the lot was 10 acres, and what's being proposed, again, has gone down to four and a half acres. Oops. Thanks. Whoops. Well, basically, the last one is um, next steps. So I think, essentially, um, what we're asking for as a committee is that you take this this plan and take it to the next step, which I assume, you know, you all know the process, but um, I think there's some recommendations that would be um, reviewed and um, researched by staff, and then um, the planning board would examine the ordinance, so ordinance changes. So we're, we're handing this over to you, and um, hopefully I can answer any questions that, that you might have. 
Thank you very much, and we appreciate um, you know you allowing us to to do this work. Thank you, Stephanie, and thanks to you and your committee for a year a year of volunteer efforts. <laughs> Thank you. I think um, what we'll do now at this point is is open it to public comment, and then then redirect comments back to Stephanie. And is that? Do you guys want? Do you want me to stay up here, or should I sit back there? Uh, well, if we open it to public comment, then you could sit down during public comment period and then come back up with questions uh, from the council. Okay. If that, is everybody okay with that? Sure. Okay. Is that okay with is it, Would that be all right? Okay. So we do have an opportunity for people who would like to speak on this agenda item. Again, three minutes per person. And... <clears throat> There is a 15-minute li uh, limit overall, uh, which could be extended with council approval. We'd like everyone to, rem to remain civil and not to comment when others are speaking. Um, so at this moment, with council approval, I will open the public comment session on item number seven, the town center committee report. Would anyone like to address the council? Hi, I'm Sheila Mayberry, 30 Trendy Road. Uh, I am uh, performing a ministerial act tonight. Uh, you have all uh, been receiving uh, comments and names on a petition. And uh, so tonight I'd like to submit the paper version of that petition to you with respect to uh, the wetlands issue. Should I give it to Deborah? Yeah, that would be fine. <coughs> that would be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hi, good evening. My name is Ann Carney. I live at 21 Angel Point Road. Um, first of all, I want to thank the committee for all the hard work they did on the town center plan. It obviously shows that a lot of thought um, and time went into considering different viewpoints. Um, the information I'm presenting tonight is um, a different viewpoint from the perspective I'm an attorney and I look at the proposed amendment to the ordinance from the perspective of somebody who's used to applying legal standards and seeing how they work kind of in the real world and the impact that they might have. Um, I did email my comments to each of the town council members earlier today, so I'm just going to give kind of the nutshell version of what I gave you um, in the interest of time. Um, first of all, if you look at the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance, it's a really carefully detailed document that provides a lot of standards that um, developers and residents alike have to comply with um, when they're undertaking uh, any kind of uh, construction project. And that's actually what zoning ordinances are supposed to do. And in fact, the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance says it is the intent of this ordinance to promote land use conformities. Um, and most of the effort in the ordinance is directed at establishing conformity. And then when you look at the town uh, center zone standards in particular, they actually provide for a lot more conformity than even the other standards in the zoning ordinance. For example, there are very specific requirements about roof height, roof pitch, where parking should be located, how buildings should be oriented, uh, exterior materials, setbacks, landscaping rules, a lot of careful detail that I think benefits the town in significant ways and will help us create a beautiful and appealing town center zone. Um, the proposed amendment, when I look at that, I see an amendment that takes our zoning ordinance on a completely opposite trajectory because it basically authorizes somebody, and it doesn't even say who it is, whether it's the code enforcement officer, or the planning board, or, or some other entity, but it authorizes that other entity to eliminate two important aspects of zoning, the resource protection standards, and then also <coughs> the setback restrictions. Those can be completely eliminated um, if the unidentified body finds a, quote, substantial public benefit. And unlike all of the other aspects of the town center zone that talk about, you know, set the, the pitch of the roof and that sort of thing, 
the proposed ordinance never defines what substantial public benefit is, and it's not contained anywhere else in the zoning ordinance. And that is what, from my perspective as a lawyer, really worries me about this proposed amendment. Um, it does suggest that, that something like creating a publicly accessible village green would qualify as a substantial public benefit, and you know that, that is true. But it doesn't eliminate the possibility that there are all these other substantial public benefits that this unidentified decision maker might say, well, yeah, let's go with this substantial public benefit. I mean, an extreme example is a fast food restaurant with a drive through window that's open 24 hours a day. I mean, people who work late nights or early mornings might really think that that is a substantial public benefit. Mrs. Carney, your time is up. If you could. Yep. Okay. And then I'll summarize. Um, just uh, to conclude, um, it also lacks a, a decision-making process for identifying what the, sub the um, public benefit is. Um, it, in contrast to the variance procedure, which is a very detailed process. And then um, finally, there's no accountability in the proposed amendment, um, unlike, again, the variance uh, process, which does have a mechanism for holding uh, developers accountable to the plans they've made. Thank, Thank you. you very much. My name is Randy Ballenbach. I live at 51 Belfield Road. I'd like to make three points. The first is which uh, the first point is that people, businesses, owners should be able and should be permitted to build and develop according to the extent allowable by current laws. However, we should not be granting variances. The point of rules is to follow them. They protect against favoritism and subjectivity of the moment. To the degree that this property is permitted to um, some wetland vari variation, as a, or um, uh, yeah, I believe they refer to it in the Cape Curry as wetland variation, they are entitled to take full advantage of that. However, we should not grant them more. Let's just follow the rules. My second point is that when these regulations were changed, I, I'm not sure of what exact year that was, to allow for three-story development and mixed use, which then led to the formation of this committee. I question, in fact, why this is going back years, but I wonder why we did that. When nothing in the survey that was undertaken in terms of people's uh, interest in how the town should develop and look, nothing seems to actually favor that. And it's also hard for me to imagine that those that those changes that were made to allow for three-store development and mixed use don't at some point incur additional infrastructure costs. Just logic to me that at some point there will be infrastructure costs that we don't currently bear. My third point is that TIFs are typically used for blighted, economically challenged areas, places like Detroit. Um, the TIF taxes which would be collected then are returned simply to the town center. Now, these are not a lot of taxes, and I wonder if people even understand that, that the only taxes that all this is about is simply property tax. We, we don't collect. We, do, as a town, do not get to keep the income tax or any, or the, there's no revenue tax benefit for us. So this tax that's collected, whatever the amount is, it simply stays within the TIF. It benefits simply the development itself. It doesn't benefit the town overall. So. I do not understand why we would want to have a TIF. I think that basically is um, a transfer or a placement of tax revenue into the, those who develop, and it provides no benefit to the town. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Suzanne McGann, 1180 Shore Road. Um, I've attended several of the Town Center Planning Committee meetings over the last year, and while I applaud the recommendations and the volunteerism um, on the committee and as they relate to the bike and pedestrian safety, I do oppose the recommendation of altering the wetland ordinance within the Town Center boundaries. I would like the Town Council to separate the wetlands issue from the Village Green and the development of the parcel between Town Hall and the Land Trust, since there is another four-acre parcel to the right of the Land Trust that also contains wetlands and has the potential to be developed in the future. 
In addition, the Town Center Planning Committee did entertain the notion of expanding the Town Center boundaries. If that is the case in the future, we would be considering many more wetlands that directly abut our current Town Center that would be affected. Cape's existing wetland ordinances were originally implemented to protect Cape's natural resources. The proposed change in the wetland ordinance outlined in the Town Center Plan sets a bad precedent for less restrictive wetland protection in other areas around Cape in the future. I see this village green as a red herring. If the town were to pr propose a village green, that they, uh, they would not do so in this manner or this location. If the town were to propose converting a vernal pool into a village green, people would be appalled and it would be dead on arrival. I see the park as an office park unlikely to be used as a destination and mostly a beautification project for a commercial residential development that would be a muddy sinkhole surrounding their development that would not be uh, able to be landscaped. This is likely the single largest deterrent to the development of this parcel. I have no issue with the landowners developing their own land within the current building guidelines. The Town Center Planning Committee meeting stated that today a single building with parking uh, and preservation of the vernal pool, which you saw, could occur. I don't have a problem with that plan. I have a problem with our town uh, potentially agreeing to eliminate our wetland restrictions in the town center so that the town would receive a free one-acre lot surrounded by parking lots and four mixed-use buildings. The one-acre lot would not be free. It will cost our wetland restrictions, which were implemented to protect important habitat and wetlands. So um, I don't know if I am this small group of residents who care about wetland protections within the town center. I don't think so. When Cape surveyed its townspeople last in 2005, Critical Insight Survey, 83% of the Cape citizens value protecting and preserving wetlands, ponds, wooded areas, and preserving our town's rural character. Cape surveyed its townspeople in May of 2012, where 53% believed it was very important to protect wildlife habitat and 44% specifically felt it was very important to protect wetlands. I do not oppose a town green within the town center boundary. I see no reason to alter our wetland restrictions within the town center to accomplish the town green concept. Our current um, uh, Thomas Memorial Library site plan includes an ample green space in front of the original historic uh, Thomas Memorial Library building facing Scott Dyer Road. The location has the benefit of greater community foot traffic <clears throat> from the library and the schools and the playgrounds because it is if, if more Mrs. centrally McGinn, located. If you could finish up, please. Mm -hmm. um, as you take the Town Center Planning Committee recommendations, I ask that you represent the sediments of the majority of the community that support our long-standing commitment to strict environmental protection. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Townsend. I live on 5 Pearl Street. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. As someone who was on this committee for seven months and attended, I think, all but three meetings, I'd like to offer some feedback to the council and some thoughts on achieving balance in the future. Um, first of all, I'd like to address balance and goal setting. And in the future, how can we assure that our goals reflect the priorities of the citizenry? Um, public opinion consistently reflects that town center is a low-level priority and has been for years. Yet one or two counselors has the ability to move forward a goal that could potentially change um, the landscape of this town. How can we help you choose goals that reflect what your constituents value? Um, could there be an opportunity at some point for us to weigh in on your goal setting early on? Um, my second point about balance is balance in committee composition and selection. There is no question that this committee attracted a certain type of person, understandably, namely citizens who want to see a change in our current center, and perhaps in the way the town controls how businesses grow. Um, business owners, developers, planners, planning board members, past and present dominated this committee. Um, how different would this committee have been if it had been more reflective of our general population and included, among others, citizens who love our town just as it is? Um, and there are many of us. Um, and so how can we help you, or can we help you, appoint 
balanced committees? Um, and is that something you're willing to look at? Um, the other is balance in decision making. From my point of view, two of the biggest recommendations, the TIF and the wetland ordinance change, um, were based on you know, somewhat one-sided information, um, at least from my perspective, what I saw. Um, and as I said, I missed three meetings, so maybe I missed the pros and cons. But um, I don't think that, um, you know, when we were talking about um, the wetland or ordinance that anyone like Anne was brought to speak about some of the potential challenges. Um, and I didn't see anything in the minutes, which brings me to my next point is balance in reporting. The practice of having members take minutes should be re-examined and I think abandoned altogether. Um, we all have different skill levels and this isn't to blame anyone for minute taking. It's just a hard thing for some people to do um, and pay attention. So meetings, if you can record them, um, I know filming is expensive, but um, recording should be cheap. That way, citizens can follow the decision-making process of these committees, which would be helpful. Um, and then finally, balance in listening to the public. Public input that wasn't reflective of the committee's recommendations appeared to cause great discomfort among some committee members. Um, and I hope you will do what this committee had difficulty doing and listen, to, um, listen and respond in a way that reflects what your constituents as a whole wish for the future. Um, and if you don't mind me making a suggestion, I hope you'll forgive me for making this suggestion, I'd like to ask that you consider starting at the back of this document. Take Could a look. Could you please finish up? Mm -hmm. um, take a look at the critical insight survey and take a look at the <clears throat> feedback from the public comments and then read the report with that fresh in your mind. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak and thanks for your service. Thank you. Um, first of all, I, is there anyone else? Could I just have a show of hands of those who would like to speak to this issue? How many more people would like to speak? Okay. Thank you. We will go beyond our 15 minutes. Is the council willing to extend the public comment period? Okay. And in order to balance debate now, is there? I'd like the next person who would like to speak, if, if there is anyone, who has a different view than those who have been expressed? Is it okay? And then we can alternate and whatever. My name is Valerie Hall. I live at 45 Broad Cove Road, and I would love to see a town green next to the town hall. Since I've moved here, I've really thought we have a rather unattractive town center, although it has improved greatly over the last 25 years. But a green next to the town hall would set off our town hall in a way that was very attractive. Um, as we've seen, this land can be developed now and under our current town center plan. The landowner can build a two or three story building or buildings and run a paved road right through the wetland. We have no control over whether or not the property on either side of the town hall is developed. It's not a choice of development or no development, which you kind of got in reading the letters in the courier. We could wind up with a town hall surrounded by pavement and buildings. Look at South Portland. You hardly notice their, South Port their town hall is just sandwiched in there. And that would not at all be conducive to the small town feel that everyone's talking about. Now we have a developer saying that with a modification of the wetlands ordinance, he'll create a green indeed to the town. All this talk about a park across the street, where will the money come? Are they going to buy, say, the Thompson's business and tear it down and make a park? I, I just don't see that happening. And I'd also like to say I think we should be careful how we discuss the issue. There's been a lot of alarmist rhetoric. Every wet spot is not a vernal pool. And cutting down trees on one acre in the center of town is not deforestation. And how nice would it be to have a town green adjacent to the town hall with some benches, perhaps around a small pond, talk about a gathering space. That would be lovely. Our town should have woods, trails, neighborhoods, farms, and a town center that supports small businesses and is attractive with our town hall as the centerpiece. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Tony Owens. I live at 19 Seaview Avenue. 
I've been a resident of Cape Elizabeth with my wife since 1976. I'm speaking to you tonight to voice my concern with the recommendation of the Town Center Planning Committee to relax our wetland ordinance protection to accommodate potential commercial development between Town Hall and the Land Trust. You will hear or already have heard concerns about changing protective ordinances to facilitate commercial development, but I will focus on the issue of wetland preservation, specifically the vernal pool in the affected area, apparently destined to become a water fountain. Although a physician by training and practice, I have many years of experience as a naturalist. I volunteer with the Nature Conservancy to catalog forest habitat throughout the state. I've been a vernal pool monitor for Maine Audubon, led field trips in Robinson Woods to its vernal pools for the Land Trust, and helped with Land Trust educational outreach to Cape Elizabeth school students in their study of vernal pools. With this background, I feel well qualified to state that the area under consideration is indeed a vernal pool, having both the hydrologic characteristics and the animal indicator species present. It's been stated and quoted in the Cape Courier that this wetland could be quote unquote moved elsewhere as a form of mitigation. The notion that creating another ephemeral wetland is a simple and certain thing is an example of arrogance with which we treat the natural world around us. A functioning vernal pool is a complex ecosystem comprising the pool where the breeding place takes place only several days a year and the young are hatched and nurtured to maturity later that summer. This requires a terrestrial buffer of up to a thousand feet where wood frogs and spotted salamanders live during the remainder of their lives until the following spring when they return to breed again. So you can see that moving the pool is in no certain way apt to create another wetland. If the town wants a green space, we already have a vibrant, functioning space full of life, wonder, and educational potential. We would do well to sustain our protection for these unusual and important habitats, not bargain them away for commercial development and a water fountain. Thank you. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Hello, I'm Sarah Lennon. I live at 54 Cranbrook Drive. Thank you all for taking comments from us tonight, and I want to thank the Town Center Committee, which I know was a lot of work, and it was certainly not always easy. So many thanks to you. Um, I'd just like to broaden the conversation out for a minute and reflect more on process that led up to the formation of this committee, rather than focusing specifically um, on the proposal. Um, and what I'd like to reflect on is the way that council goals are chosen. And what I'd like to suggest is that if you all would get more citizen input up front before you set your goals in place and before you created charges and formed committees, I think that everyone would be much happier and that all of us would save a lot of time, um, most importantly you all. So in reflecting on that, I thought, what if every councillor were charged with talking to 250 residents before you sat down to do your goals? And it's interesting for me, because of course I used to be a councillor and now I'm a citizen, so I'm looking at it from both points of view. I don't think that would be too hard in this day and age. You have email, you have Facebook, um, you could spend an hour outside the IGA at rush hour and see what people had to say. And what if you just asked, you know, a few open-ended questions like, hey, what do you think are the three most important things we should do this year in Cape? Or what would be your three highest priorities for the council to focus on this year? Make notes of them, and between all of you, you would have an enormous amount of citizen input. And what if you found a lot of overlap with some of those? That would guide you in saying, I think our goals this year should be X. And I'd like to think with that more bottom-up approach, you would work on things that everyone agreed were really important and that you would get a lot more citizen buy-in and everyone would be happier. Um, so to move very briefly to our current situation, I feel that it's troubling in that, you might not believe this, but we citizens actually want to be collaborative and positive and helpful. We don't like arguing, and I know you guys don't like arguing, but we disagree with the fundamental proposal at the essence um, of this report, which is that we should loosen our wetland ordinances across the entire 10 Center District. I think we all understand that Mr. Hafenruffer is 
free to develop his land. That's not in question. He owns it. He's a private owner. He can do whatever he wants. Um, what I think we're concerned with is sort of a government overreach, and that is the proposal to alter these, these pretty cherished regulations in our town across a whole district, and perhaps across an expanded district. Um, there was, after all, much conversation in the beginning of this committee about what an expanded envelope would look like that included the 100-year horse farm and down by Lyons Field and some of those other areas that, frankly, have a lot of wetlands. So my time is up, but in closing, um, I would just like to say that you all know that Article 8, Section 1 of the Town Charter gives citizens the right to take an ordinance change to a vote with 700 signatures, a relatively easy thing to do, um, and just keep that in mind as you deliberate this at your workshop, because that, this would be an awful lot of work and citizen time and, frankly, staff time to wend this thing through the next two years of committees and subcommittees. So if that's Could an you please finish up. that you might want to keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Seidman, 21 Oak View Drive. Uh, a couple of quotes are from the recent Courier article. Councillor Wagner, the practical reality is that a developer can do a lot of what they want to do regardless of what the town council does with the ordinance. Maureen O'Meara, one of the things getting missed in this discussion, under the current RP2 wetland regulations, some wetland alterations are allowed. I can't imagine a clearer argument for not changing the ordinance. If it's already legal for a town center property owner to alter an RP2 wetland, why propose an ordinance change? Is it just to allow the village green to be built? Because if so, there's no substantial public demand for it to be located by town hall, and there's been no compelling argument that there is substantial public benefit. If there's concern about burdening taxpayers by passing an allegedly free, by passing on an allegedly free village green, why would you promote the TIF plan, <clears throat> never once stating what any negative implications of it might be to us? Why does it take Governor Frank Governale and others in this town to point that out? Presenting only one side of the TIF plan reveals problematic bias several warned would be unavoidable unav with this group of developers and planners. According to your own guidelines, without substantial public benefit, this recommendation must be removed. In short, without that benefit, it's not legit. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Seeing, okay. My name is Laura McGrath. I live at 1218 Shore Road, and I'm here to just voice my opposition to the development. And as I'm listening and understanding, I have really no, um, I, we understand we have no control over what a developer does. And I guess I, at some point, had thought that as a town, you had some input on what's developed and that things would remain consistent among or, or in your thoughts about a character that you're trying to create for your town. So I guess I was wrong there, but um, I am also opposed to the location of the town green. I feel like the access for kids isn't really safe. I feel like the, the schools are across the street and that a, a better location would be by the library. Um, I don't love that there's so much traffic on Route 77, and that, that's my big opposition to the development, not only because I live near it, but also that the traffic input into that 77 area is going to grow, and I think that that's, from a town planning perspective, just a poor location for a big development and a town green. So, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> is there anyone else that would like to speak? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public comment. Uh, session <clears throat> and back to um, the council uh, we just had a PowerPoint by the chairman of the committee um, is there a motion to receive the report Councilor Sherman I, I move that we receive the report of the town center plan committee with there, appreciation for all of its hard work during the past year and a half or so is there a second I'll second that, Jessica. Councilor Walsh, <clears throat> is there any discussion? 
Are there any questions for Stephanie Carver? Anyone? Uh, Councilor Walsh? Uh, just a, a question. If we, we receive it, um, would it be the chair's um, plan to bring this to a upcoming workshop? We certainly can. Is that the will of the council? I think that makes sense. I understand the June workshop is already uh, scheduled with a pretty full agenda. It is. Yeah. We typically don't hold workshops in July and August, so it would look like we would get to a workshop in September. Um, uh, I'm not aware of a compelling reason to do it any quicker than that, but if we were going to have a workshop in the summer, I'd say let's do this then. But um, I think we should well, at least get it on the next available workshop date. Yeah, that, that is uh, September 3rd. Um, we are full for the June workshop. Um, any other thoughts on that? Okay. Any questions for Stephanie? I'm sorry, Councilor Jordan? Oh, no, no questions for Stephanie, but for our September workshop, is it possible to add discussion about those two suggestions, the note-taking for committees as well as the, us talking to citizens in order to, <laughs> <laughs> to figure out a better way to establish our goals, which I think... You can do that. I mean, I don't know. I'm not in favor or against the half and grown and stand in front of the IGA, but rethinking our goal setting, if we can put that onto a future agenda. Well, we're, we're talking about goals next week. Perfect. So that's on our agenda for the 16th workshop. Any, other, any questions for Stephanie? So, I don't have so, any questions. Okay. Uh, are we going to have an opportunity to make some comments? Certainly. Um, I, I just wanted to address a couple of things I heard from the citizens. Um, <clears throat> regarding the TIF point first, uh, I, I address what Mr. Seidman had to say. I, I know for a fact that we took into account both positive and negative effects of TIFs. I, I asked that question myself of the Falmouth town planner, uh, and I, I'm very curious about that point because I was concerned about that issue, and we did receive testimony on that. Uh, and I think it's an important point, but we, we did consider it. Um, with regard with uh, Dr. Owens had to say, uh, I'm, uh, I consider myself an environmentalist. I'm very interested in vernal pools. I, I certainly go and enjoy them in uh, Robinson Woods and my children all the time. Um, and I think it's important to note that if there is a, a vernal pool by state law, then state law would kick in anyway, and there would be separate state regulations that uh, took care of that, and the developer could only do so much with it anyway. Um, as far as whether the, the committee ever talked about expanding the town center zone, I think that's uh, been misconstrued. There was one comment by one town center planning committee member that put it out there, and there was never any serious deliberation or discussion regarding that point, as far as my recollection goes. Um, I really appreciated um, Mrs. Carney's comments, and those are the sort of comments that I hope that we have um, going forward if we do ever discuss any ordinance change, which is certainly not a certainty, um, I found those to be helpful comments. Um, they, they advise me about different ways to think about uh, proposed ordinance and uh, where the potential pitfalls are. I agree there was not a definition of substan uh, substantial public benefit. That's maybe something that we should certainly consider uh, amongst some of your other suggestions. I found that very helpful. Um, I happen to be a proponent of doing and uh, paying for a statistically valid survey regarding the town center district itself. Uh, I didn't have a lot of support in spending money on that. Um, I think the critical insight survey is of some value, but of limited value in the circumstance, because I think that it does not address the town center planning, uh, the town center district. It was all of Cape Elizabeth, and I agree that as far as all of Cape Elizabeth goes, people prioritize things much more highly than the town center. Uh, but that if we had a separate survey, I would su suppose that people would have much different uh, reflections on what they wanted for a town center. I know that I do. Um, I appreciate Sarah's comment about the 700 signatures to get on the ballot. That's, that's an important consideration. Uh, I, I, I hope that uh, Dr. Owens will continue to advise us on the Vernal Pool and environmental implications. Your comments were very much appreciated. So, uh, and I appreciate Mrs. Hall's comments, and I think there's probably a, a lot of other citizens that uh, share your views as well. So this is just, you know, it's a big beginning of a process, 
And whether or not ordinance is ever uh, brought to the ordinance committee or not is still an open question, but it's, uh, I think, something worth considering. Council Walsh. Uh, Jessica, the, given what we heard about the next workshop uh, and how important this issue has become, should we be planning to have a workshop in July or August? I mean, it just, I mean, it, 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 you know, we need to get we need to get this process moving, mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I'm just, I'm just sitting around waiting for September, a couple of months, three months now, from now. I just think could we be further along if we spent the kind of time on it sometime during either July or August? I'll let Tom wants to say something. Yeah, just to respond to that, if the council wishes a workshop, I'm happy to do it. But you know, I also want to, I've had zero discussions with Mr. Heffenreff or with Mr. Heffenreff's representatives. This is, you know, I've had zero discussions with anyone about TIFs. Uh, you know, I, it, it, my sense is that if they were really in a hurry to do this, I might have heard from them. Uh, you know, if there's other reasons you think you ought to be working on this, you know, in, in the shorter term, fine. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm a little... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about all of this because uh, you know, I, I think there's been some discussions, but the, you know, with, without any, I don't consider that they've directly approached the town. They've spoken to a committee. And you know, it's not the way we usually do things. I'm looking at the plan. It's showing you know, tie-in to the town center lot. Uh, you know, again, I've had zero input on any of that. And, you know, I would hope that, you know, before we had a workshop that, you know, at least some of us might get a better understanding of, of exactly what Mr. Heffernreffer's representative is proposing, because I have no idea what it is. I have no idea what this TIF is about. Uh, and well, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned, you know, that I think a lot of people have, have run off with assumptions uh, on this uh, that, that aren't necessarily grounded in, in the full reality of what it takes to do a TIF. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think as some, as some of the public I comment has been, you know, there, there are just a lot of questions out there. And I, I share a lot of those questions. And I'm not sure if a, uh, if a quick workshop uh, is the best way to approach this. Councilor Sherman. Uh, to Jim's uh, point, though, um, a criticism that the council sometimes gets when we uh, move forward to amend the ordinance or, or sort of deal with any issue that's controversial, sometimes we just take a long time. Right. And that creates <clears throat> uncertainty for members of the public. You know, how much energy do people really have to keep monitoring the issue, come to meeting after meeting after meeting? And so part of me says we should sort of get into it. Uh, and by, by the same token, I certainly respectful of, of the town manager wanting to have some additional time to, to get more background for him to get up to speed on what the committee has been doing. Uh, and so I'm going to contradict what I said earlier. I, waiting until September does seem a little long to me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if we could do something in July or August, I think that would be helpful to just move the issue forward if we're going to. Uh, also on the TIF, my understanding is if we're going to reap any significant benefit from that, we'd want to have the TIF in place before April of 2015. So if it's something we don't want to pursue, then fine. But if we want to take advantage of the increase in revenue, given the development that's occurring in the town center now, uh, we, that would give us the opportunity to capture more revenue for the TIF, if we're going to do that. So it, in other words, we're going to lose an opportunity, especially on, on the TIF proposal. I recognize I need to learn a lot more about TIFs as, as well. Uh, but I. To wait till September just seems like a long time. Um, Any other thoughts, Councilor Ray? I'm going to take a different um, position. Um, I sometimes think that we're criticized for moving too fast, and I hear what the town manager says. I don't want to have a workshop unless we have clear and concise information. Um, from I think all of our experiences, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, and I think we've heard from some people by email and this evening. Um, and I think um, some of their opinions are based on misinformation. So I don't want to sound like I'm putting on the brakes, but I guess I am. I don't have a problem waiting until the time that we have adequate information to meet and look at whatever decisions we might be making or, or you know, whatever we're doing, because I think if we 
me too soon. Too soon. We're going to be um, maybe spinning around with, again, not enough information or misinformation. And so this is not usually a position I would take, but I would say that we need to make sure we have everything <coughs> before we meet again uh, on this issue. Councilor McCausland. I agree with Councillor Ray. I don't have a strong sense of urgency about needing to move forward at this point with any of what we've heard for recommendations. Um, I, I do, by the way, want to thank everybody who participated. I know it's been, again, a long process, but it's been a process that took close to a year to accomplish, and so I, I guess I, my sense is why would we jump in immediately and make decisions that are going to affect the town center for, I'll say, a generation or more to come? So I, I, I favor a much more measured approach, I think, rather than jumping right into a workshop. I'd like time to digest the material, make sure, as Councilor Ray says, we have the actual factual information. We know what we're talking about by the time we do sit down for a workshop. Council Wagner, do you have any thoughts? Uh, it is summertime, so I'm not itching to do a workshop, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm okay either way. Either way. Yep. Council Jordan? Same. Um, well, I'll weigh in. I'm in favor of waiting until September. I do feel, you know, we will move this item, but um, we have councils that are very heavily involved in, a, in another project that will culminate in August. And given that we're all volunteers and working very hard, uh, I see this as, you know, a council sort of semi-fatigue issue. There's a lot going on that's going to finish up in August, and I think that in order to give it our best fresh fresh approach, waiting to September, to me, is the most judicious thing to do. Um, and that gives us time to digest. And then when we look at it, you know, some other things that some of us are extremely heavily involved in will be finished. And then we can give it better attention, I think, than we're going to be able to give it in the summer. Um, so I'm in favor of waiting till September. Um, but first of all, let's vote to receive the report itself. <laughs> If, um, and then we could just finish up with a workshop, or we don't have to vote on the workshop, we can just take a consensus, my understanding. Um, is that right, Mike? We can just do a consensus in the workshop. We don't need to actually vote that. Do we? I, I, I'd be happy to amend my motion to receive the report and to, that this would be scheduled for a workshop, okay. for our September workshop. I mean, I'm sensing that that's a, the, the, the greater number of council members want to do that, so I'm happy to amend my motion. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second for the second motion? Council Walt? Second. That. Any more discussion? Yeah, the manager. Just very briefly, and I, and I would hope by September we can give you some more materials on the questions I raised and perhaps on some of the issues and questions that the mm -hmm. public has raised as well that uh, in terms of some of the, the, you know, if there is a proposal to come forward, you know, that it might need a little more meat in a few areas. So. Council Walt. Thank you for that confidence, Michael, because that's what I was trying to, to convey, that we need to take control of this. And it's been a year, and I just want people to understand that we take it serious, even though it is summer. Uh, but confidence, Michael, just relate is important, that we'll be working on this, even though we're not scheduled for a, uh, a workshop until September. Good. And ju just on that point, we'll, we'll keep an open file. Anyone, you know, there'll, there'll be nothing that happens that everyone's not aware of. There'll be files in the office. We'll put any emails, any updates in it. So, you know, I've, I've read all about these backroom deals that they have been, and, you know, I don't even know where the backroom is because uh, <laughs> I haven't been invited to any meetings uh, of backroom deals. So we'll make sure everyone's kept informed and everything's transparent. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Item number 88, restaurant seats in a VA zone. Um, I don't think the planning board chairman is here. Um, is there any? Uh, I could briefly. Okay. You know, Thank you. The town Thanks. And the town planner is also here. I think everyone is aware of the, the proposal that was originally that came to the town council about a year ago, uh, proposing to increase the seats in a BA zone from 80 seats to 100 seats was referred to the planning board. The planning board went through a very lengthy analysis and process and balancing it with all their other 
issues, concerns, and uh, uh, applications, and did recommend at the most recent meeting uh, that the council adopt the 100-seat provision uh, in, in the BA zone. I, I am recommending, and you notice in the agenda notes, that in order to move this along, it does take a bit of time, uh, that it be concurrently referred to both the ordinance committee and to public hearing with the hope that the ordinance committee could look at it in the interim uh, so that we don't get delayed another month uh, from the already long delay. Thank you, Mike. Uh, is there a motion? Council Walsh? I move that uh, Town Council uh, receive the recommendation of the Planning Board, recommend to set a public hearing on uh, July 14th and to uh, concurrent with review by the Ordinance Committee. There a second? Council second. Ray? <clears throat> second. Any discussion? Council Jordan? I was just going to comment on Mike's comment of the concurrence of the public hearing and the Ordinance Committee. I'm glad to see that happening so this can be moved through. It's a little shocking to see that it's taken almost a full year for such a, a, a slight change in our ordinance. It's not like rewriting language or anything, so I'm glad to see that happening. Anyone else? Councilor Sherman? I, I, I'm just wondering at the planning board level, was there any discussion about distinguishing between the two BA zones in terms of this amendment, and I apologize. I just I'm, I'm thinking that these are the the issues that may go before the ordinance committee. Uh, there would be that possible issue where you have a different maximum for the two different BA zones, uh, as well as was there any consideration for the distance uh, between a particular business that wants to expand the number of seats and the closest residence? I know in the past we've talked about. If there aren't residents within a certain number of feet, then your business use may be more intense. And I don't mean to have a long debate about substance, but I, I just was curious if, if those issues were raised. There was substantive discussion about whether or not a separate standard should be established for Shore Road versus the Route 77 BA district. The decision of the board, and it was a split decision, but there, it was the decision of the board that they were going to have one recommendation that would cover both BA districts. There is a history, if you look at the standards in the VA district, there are some places where they're treated differently because the character is different, but the board was not willing to make this change. Um, and your other question was regarding distance. They had no debate about that. All they did was look at the number of seats because there are provisions in the ordinance right now that look at distance, and those are related to hours of operation and whether or not you can sit outside and serve alcohol. So they weren't really related to this whole seating issue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, any other questions or discussion? When's our next ordinance call? It's um, <laughs> June 26th, but we do uh, have the high water um, issue on right. that agenda, but we can talk about having a longer meeting, um, whatever is the will of everybody. I know Jim likes to stay extra on the oh, I just love it where he's, yeah. <laughs> <That's> the, <laughs> just block We've off been a entire, busy committee, haven't we? Can we can block off an entire morning, that's all. That's good. <laughs> so any other discussion on the, on the motion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Good. Item number 89, review of the duration of time for ordinance amendment reviews, which very timely considering Councilor Jordan's very recent comment. <laughs> um, so anyway, I will go ahead and, and um, just briefly uh, review this, introduce it, review it for the Council. Uh, basically, um, uh, Councilor uh, Ray and I had looked at with the town manager what the recent um, time frames have been for issues coming before the planning board because there have been complaints that they are taking too long at times. So looking at the, the uh, most recent five issues, um, you know, it's very interesting to see the differences. And of course, some things do require a long time and need to be, you know, thoroughly vetted. Everything needs to be thoroughly vetted, but some things do the complexity take longer than others. But nevertheless, we felt it might be prudent to uh, have a meeting with the planning board and at a workshop and talk to them. So at this point in time, Councilor Ray, who's chairman of the Ordinance Committee, and myself are planning to attend the June 17 planning board workshop to chat about these numbers. 
and see what what transpires. And what I'm proposing is that Council Ray and I would then report back to the Council in July as to what the Planning Board's thoughts were about um, these recommendations. So, mm -hmm. This is nothing we really need to vote on, but I just wanted to let you know. You, I, you've seen the, the memorandum, but that's why. Because, you know, things have been brought up and people are concerned, and, you know, so. Good. Okay, any questions? Good. Councilor Ray, do you want to add anything? No, I think you covered it. Okay. Um, so, okay, that's it. And now we come to the last opportunity for citizens to speak to something that is not on tonight's agenda. On 89, do you want them to acknowledge the suited report? Oh, yeah, or of the memorandum? Yeah. I'm whatever. sorry. No, that's okay. Yep. Uh, so could I have a motion acknowledging receipt of our recommendation? Of that's correct. Yeah. Um, I would like to move that we um, receive the uh, recommendation from uh, memorandum, I guess, yeah. and from uh, Kathy Ray relative to the duration of time for ordinance amendment reviews. Second. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, Mike. Okay. <laughs> now, any, uh, would anyone like to speak to anything that is not on tonight's agenda? Yes, sir. Please come to the please come to the podium. Yeah. And you have three minutes. <laughs> you don't have to rush up. <laughs> My name is Jim Clark. I live at 350 Ocean House Road. Could you repeat your last name? Clark. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm a new resident. This is my first meeting I've ever seen, and I just wanted to say how very impressed I am with the structure, the rigor, and the thoroughness by which a pretty controversial issue was dealt with. And I look forward to getting to know a lot of you. My wife Ann and I are moving from McLean, Virginia, right outside of D.C., and uh, moving again will be on the location on July 18th. Sorry, June 18th. So we're very close to being here full time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Welcome, sir. Welcome. Welcome. Anyone else for items not on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, may I have a, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Councilor Ray, a second. Councilor McCausland, all those in favor? It's unanimous.